Okay, I think I'm live. Um, let me see here, make sure I'm live. Alrighty, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, I don't have my earphones, I can't find the ones with the little speaker, but I tested out the speaker before um, and it seemed to have been working good. So if you can't hear me, uh, just let me know. Hey Tim, can you hear me? Hopefully. Okay, well I'm just gonna go ahead and give a little chat to you guys on sports nutrition. Um, first of all, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you guys are getting out and exercising in spite of everything that's going on. It's just really important to, thanks Tim, it's just really important to stay moving, um, be active as much as you can, whether it be just around your block, in your backyard, or in your house, with your home gym, whatever. Please stay active during this time. Eat well, eat properly. A lot of times we start going towards comfort foods, which is totally normal, um, but just please keep in mind what you're doing during these times um, just to remain healthy so when we get back on track, we can pick up right where we left off. Anyway, okay, so sports nutrition. We're going to talk a little bit today about sports nutrition, and a lot of times people ask me the question about sports nutrition and what is sports nutrition, how is it different than just eating in general, um, you know, why do I need sports nutrition? I already eat during the day. Well, of course we all do. Um, but basically sports nutrition is fueling your body um, to give its ability to function at its peak performance. Yes, you probably can eat the way you normally eat every day and go out and work out and be totally fine. Are you performing at your peak ability with using the stuff that you're eating? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so the whole point in sports nutrition is learning how to fuel your body properly to support the type of training and fitness and workouts and exercising and whatever sport it is, whether it be paddling or not, that you're doing. Yes, you do fuel differently in sports nutrition for different sports. So uh, I don't recommend the same things for a paddler as I do for a weightlifter. I don't recommend the same things for a short distance paddler that I do for an ultra distance paddler or ultra distance runner. Um, so there are differences in sports nutrition, but just in a whole, sports nutrition is learning how to fuel your body properly for whatever it is that you might be doing. So one big thing that I like to start off with is how much fuel do I need throughout the day? That's a lot of the questions that people ask me is, okay, well, I eat during the day, but like, is this enough? And I'm fueling before, during, and after, maybe, maybe not. Um, but <clears throat> fueling throughout the day is also very important as well. Um, and there's always a debate, like a lot of people, they always want to lose weight or, you know, they want to maintain, they want to look good, they want to be lean, mean. Um, so sometimes they tend to cut back on calories, which actually in the long run, especially when you're training, could possibly hurt your performance and your results with gaining lean body mass. So basically, RMR, which is your resting metabolic rate, is how many calories your body needs to perform basic functions, breathing, your organs. Uh, just basic functions. You could sit on the couch and you might burn, based on your weight and height and everything, 1,500 calories a day just sitting there. So what happens, and I actually, um, I'm actually going to write some things down as we go along to show you guys because I know a lot of people are very visual, but what happens is when you start cutting back on your calories that you consume throughout the day, you run out of calories to support your training. And as athletes or as paddlers, we don't want this. So you can see here I wrote energy availability equals energy intake minus energy expended. What does that mean? So that means the energy that you have available is what you ate minus what you used. As an athlete, you do not want to be in a deficit with energy. Why? <laughs> Obviously, because then you won't perform your training or at a race as high as you can. Um, yes, you will be able to function, but you probably won't be able to function at your best. Um, let's talk a little bit about fuels. So there's three types of fuels, carbohydrates, fats, and protein. Carbohydrates are your number one source of fuel. They're great for quick energy releases, um, they're good for high intensity exercises, they require less oxygen to be processed. Um, when you intake carbohydrates, if you don't use them right away, they're stored as glycogen in your muscles and your liver for later use. And as you exercise, your body breaks down this glycogen into glucose for energy. So this is why we like to eat carbohydrates as a fuel for your workouts. 
Um, I won't talk about the keto diet today. We can go into that later, but carbohydrates are very important for peak performance. Um, once your glycogen stores are depleted, your body runs and it turns to fats and proteins for energy. Yes, you can use fats. Fats are great for energy, especially in the longer distance events. You do not want to resort into digging into your protein and taking out from your muscles for energy. You know, we don't want to do that. So, oh, Mark, good. Just finished my protein smoothie. Awesome. Good job, Mark. <laughs> I got to remember to read these comments over here. But anyways, so like I said, carbs are stores as, as glycogen in the muscles and liver for later use. You don't want to dig into your protein. You don't want to dig into your muscle protein to get energy. So you want to make sure you're intaking enough carbohydrates to support your workouts. Um, if you don't consume enough of the energy you're expending, like I said, you're going to dig into the fats. You're going to dig into the proteins. We want to try to stay away from that. Fats, however, are great for longer distances. Um, we start to supplement with fats more the longer we go. A lot of times it's, um, well, it depends on the sport you're playing really, actually. But a lot of times as we start going into like an hour and a half for paddling or two hours plus, um, a lot of times it's when we start supplementing with more fatty type of foods or fuels. Um, but we also support the workout with not just fats, but also carbohydrates as well. So you're going to have a mix. Um, some of the good carbohydrates that you could supplement with, I always say go to whole foods first if you can. Uh, whole grains, pastas, fruits, vegetables, you know what carbs are, they taste great, you can use them. Um, there are certain times where you can use sugary carbs for a boost, uh, but I don't recommend that in your daily diet. And yeah, so that's carbs. Um, we're going to learn later on in this how to use them for your training and when to use them, but for now I just want to go over a little bit about each macronutrient. Um, for fats, <clears throat> fats are good, like I said, for longer distances, an hour and a half, two hours plus, plus, plus. Um, mixed with carbohydrates, even better. Some sources are olive oils, uh, fish, omega-3 supplements, uh, plant oils, things like that. Protein is what is used for muscle recovery. It is not the first fuel that's used, but we want to make sure we use it for muscle recovery. Um, so we're not gonna fuel with protein to try to get energy for a workout, but we're gonna use it afterwards. Um, unfortunately, protein doesn't taste as good as carbs and fats, so we tend to under eat it. Uh, but it's very important that we pay attention to our protein intake. As athletes and as paddlers, it's recommended that we eat two 0.2 grams per kilogram or one gram per pound at the very minimum to support muscle protein synthesis. Uh, as you increase and become, you know, a little bit farther ahead or you start training more, it's important to eat even more than that as an athlete. Really one gram per uh, pound should be what everybody in general is eating, even if you don't work out. Um, it's, it supports your muscles, it supports your skeletal muscle, your, your bones, uh, it just does a lot of great stuff, and unfortunately, we don't eat it. I always recommend to sign up for something like MyFitnessPal so that we can start tracking to see where you're at with your macronutrients to see what you might be deficit in. Um, a lot of people have questions about protein supplements. Um, it is important as an athlete that we have supplements. Uh, it's, it's very hard to support our sport and our lifestyle without supplementing. I don't know many people that can eat... X amount of chicken or X amount of tuna or whatever it is that you might eat to get your protein without supplementing. So people ask a lot of times, okay, well, I want to have a protein shake. What kind of protein is the best? Whey protein is the number one source of protein supplementation. Why is that? It has all nine essential amino acids. Um, these amino acids help with protein synthesis. So whey protein has that complete amino acid profile. Um, you can, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, totally fine to use the pea proteins or vegetable proteins. Um, just make sure that you pay attention to the dose. For example, if you're gonna have 25 grams of whey protein, a lot of recommendations say that you should double your dose if you're vegan or vegetarian to get the same effects in mo muscle protein synthesis um, when you consume it. Also, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, 
and I actually want to do a whole post on this later, but if it's important to supplement then if it doesn't have a full amino acid profile with the protein that you're taking, uh, you should supplement with an amino acid supplement. So um, anyway, okay, so those are the macronutrients. And I want to talk a little bit about how we use those to fuel for performance. That's why we're all in Paddle Monster. We all awesome paddlers trying to become the best, trying to go as fast and strong as we can. So how do we use these nutritional aspects to fuel properly, right? We're doing all this work on the water. We're doing all this work on the land. But if we're not fueling properly, we're not getting the most of our training. So how do we do this? It's, it varies on the person, the intensity, the time, but just in general, you should have a pre, an intra, and a post training nutrition plan. So this is what sports nutrition is about, basically. Pre, uh, intra, and post uh, fueling. So for pre-training, what does that mean? It means sometimes you can pre-fuel four hours, two hours in advance, depending on your length and intensity. But at the very least, you should be fueling, if you're going to be working out for, for even 30 minutes, you should be fueling 30 to 45 minutes prior with a carbohydrate supplement just to be able to prevent sugar drops, top off your glycogen stores, um, and supply the muscles with that needed glycogen, and also become mentally alert. You know, if you're, if you're running low on sugar or glycogen, your mind sometimes is like, fuzzy and once you take that bite of food or goo or whatever you might use all of a sudden you'll notice you're mentally aware so you're alert you're ready to go right so you don't want to deplete yourself you know often people wake up and they they want to go for a workout for some reason without fueling um, before they eat breakfast and you, you don't have to eat a full breakfast but I personally don't recommend that I think it's important that you intake at least 25 grams of carbs 30 minutes prior to your workout have your coffee, have a little bite of a fruit, half a banana, whole banana, whatever it is that you might like, but get some carbohydrates in there for your workout. Even if it's very early in the morning, it's time to start incorporating that and practicing it and seeing what works with your stomach because in the long run, you're going to have better training, more solid results because your training is going to be supported better. So it's important to incorporate that. I know a lot of people, they don't like eating breakfast before they work out, but eating something is important. Um, so some things that people use before workouts, like I said, goose, gels, half a sandwich, half a banana, things like that. Um, so just make sure you eat something. Intra-workout. What does this mean? It means eating during workouts. I know a lot of people don't like Larry. I think you're still on here maybe watching, but I know Larry doesn't like to drink much or eat much during his workouts if they're under a certain amount of time, which is fine. He's practiced, he's trained like this. If you're one of those people too, great, but make sure you're practicing and training like this. Does that mean that he's getting the most of his performance? Well, we don't really know because he doesn't do it normally to test it against each other. So unless you're like Larry, who's been training for 25, 30 years at a high, high level and knows what his body can handle, it's important to test your intra workout strategy with how you're going to fuel yourself. I always recommend that anything over 30 minutes, uh, you should start thinking about how you're going to fuel yourself with carbohydrates. Um, it, of course, it depends on the length and the intensity of your workout, but you should be fueling after 30 minutes and definitely after an hour. Um, Different sports, different activities, different intensities require different amounts of fuels, like different amounts of carbohydrates. For example, you might not use, the runners, they use a high amount of carbohydrates because their whole entire body is moving the whole entire time. Whereas a biker may not use as much carbohydrates in an hour, so they might not need as much because their upper body is a little more still than their lower body. Paddlers, we do use a lot of our body um, motion, especially the higher level paddlers. They're doing squats like for an hour straight. Um, but sometimes, you know, if we don't have that full form, 
we might not be using that much energy like what we think, so we don't have to supply the body with as much carbohydrates as a runner, per se. Um, oops. Okay. So, yes, intra-workout, you want to eat something, intra-workout, anything over half an hour. It doesn't have to be eating. A lot of people supplement their water with the Tailwind type of supplement or something that you uh, pour in there and mix it together. Um, anything that has carbohydrates would work for that. So you, you did your workout, you fueled pre-training, you got your workout in, you ate, drank something within that amount of time, you get done, and now what? Like, do you just like go home and take a nap, or go on your couch and watch TV, or go back to work like I do sometimes, but you wanna make sure that we're gonna fuel properly post-workout because this is probably the most important time for muscle protein synthesis, which means building your muscles back up after you worked out. Um, and about 30 minutes to an hour is the best time to get the protein back in your muscles. Um, so this is why we wanna supplement with protein and carbohydrate mix within 30 minutes, I say, to an hour. If you have to go longer, that's fine, but if you can prepare for that time, like bring a little cooler with you or bring you know something with you so that way you have it, uh, that's the best. Within 30 minutes to an hour is the best. A protein carbohydrate mix. It could be a sandwich. It could be bread and meat or what you know rice and chicken and fats and avocados and a nice full balanced meal. It might be some people just bring a shaker with protein and then have a banana on the side or some peanut butter shakes, you know things like that. Um, but it's very important to get at least 25 grams of protein post-workout. Super important. If you want to get the most of your workout, you need to supplement with protein plus carbs. Carbohydrate helps facilitate the transport of protein. Um, so protein plus carbs post-workout, and you're going to be in awesome condition. Um, also, as far as that goes, the high glycemic foods such as bananas, pastas, honeys, things like that, it stimulates glycogen replacement at a faster rate. So if you want to get the protein into your muscles faster, have a little bit of a higher glycemic uh, index food that'll get in there faster. Um, I see some people logged on. Does anybody have any specific questions here? Hold on a second. Let me scroll down. If you have time, can you address hydration? Sure, Tim. What to use and how much before training or a race? So hydration is a funny thing. Um, it varies greatly between or among different people. So, you know, some people have a higher sweat rate and it can get pretty like narrow as far as specifics with people, but um, you should, let me see here, how much? before training and a race. Okay, um, so they say that you should hydrate about 45 minutes prior to a race. It You have to pay attention to the um, conditions of the environment. For example, if it's hotter, you might actually have to hydrate a little bit more than you normally would if it's not. So you want to look at the conditions, you want to look at the intensity of your workout, how hard are you going to be working, the time that you're going to be working out, how much should you hydrate. They say 17 to 20 ounces, um, like two to three hours prior, is what you should consume for hydration. And then 0.5 to 2 liters an hour, depending on the time and intensity and environment, if you're in the heat. So it really varies greatly. Um, but you should definitely hydrate, and like we've said, and you've heard before, I'm sure, um, once you start getting thirsty, it's pretty much a little bit too late. So you don't want to get to that point. So whenever I'm in a race, and I know other racers are like this, I start drinking within like 10 minutes. Um, and then I'll take a couple sips every, you know, 5 or 10 minutes or whatever. I don't want to get myself too thirsty. So if you start feeling too thirsty, you might have a problem a little later. You might experience cramping. Um, and hydration means more than just water. Yes, it is your mix. It could be your mix. You know, you want to mix it up with electrolytes, especially if you're in a hotter environment and you know you're going to be sweating a lot. 
So also, just so you know, hydration has a lot to do with performance. So if you don't hydrate properly, you're going to experience a reduction in performance. So hydration is very important. A lot of times people go out for a paddle, myself included, I, I'm guilty of this. Um, I might do 30 minutes, no problem, whatever, no water. But for me, I like to go, if I do 30 minutes or more, that's when I really start supplementing with fuel and hydration. Um, you should do it anyways, because we're going to be doing it when we're racing. So if you're not practicing it now, you know, how are you going to feel when you're racing? You, you're not even going to know. You it might put yourself in a bad uh, position, and you don't want to do that. Um, let me see what other questions. The long races like Key West, how do you eat the night before and morning of Scott over 10? Um, long races like Key West, so Key West is a 12 mile race, um, so it, it can take around two to three to four plus hours for some people. Um, how do you eat the night before and the morning of? Well, once again, this is very individualized, and I want to just say this right now, sports nutrition is very individualized. What I do and what you do and what that other person does is going to be completely different. The numbers are going to be different based on our weights, our heights, our intensity, our, our level of performance. So just so you know, everybody is very different. But So how, how do you eat the night before and of a long distance, say for example, 12 mile race and the morning of? So the night before you want to have a well-balanced meal with a little higher carb con content. You could carb load for a 12 mile race if you want a day or two before. Um, the numbers are very specific to you as a person but you could carb load, so you want to eat and top off those glycogen stores uh, the night before. The morning of, same thing, but make sure that you practice this stuff, by the way. Um, don't just go out there and, you know, the morning of your race be like, oh, Victoria said, you know, I got to eat more carbs so I can have more energy, and then I'm going to puke now because I can't even breathe because my stomach's so full. Um, no, you want to make sure you practice this. So carbohydrates, carbohydrates, carbohydrates. Um, yes, incorporate fats as well for a 12 mile race. You're going to you're gonna dig into those as well. But you can fuel up the night before with carbs, fuel up the morning of with the carbs and fats, well-balanced diet. And um, if you want more specific numbers, uh, message me and we can go over some of that stuff. But it does depend on how much you weigh and the length that you're planning on uh, paddling for and the time length. Um, for example, paddling, they say, well, we're thinking that you probably use anywhere from 40 to 70 grams of carbs per hour. Uh, we're not sure yet because there's not many studies out on paddling, but as far as it goes with running and things, uh, they supplement a lot with just as an average 60 grams of carbs an hour. Um, so you can see how much you might need to have in store for your race. Does that make sense, Scott? Okay, let's see here. What is the source vegans need to prep? Uh, Pam, okay. I can post on here later as far as sources with the vegan protein and doubling uh, your protein intake versus non-vegans. Uh, it is based on several studies that show the impact on muscle protein synthesis. So um, I can send you the studies either via message or here on the comment section so that way um, people can see that you do need to double or it has been found that you should double to get the same effects as you would with whey protein. So does anybody have any other questions here? Let me scroll down. Okay. All right. Cool. So I just wanted today to kind of just get everybody on the same page because I have a bunch of different topics that I'm going to be talking about throughout the next few weeks. Hopefully it's just a few weeks that we are um, going here with the uh, Facebook Lives to keep us all entertained. Um, but I wanted to kind of get everybody up to date on different macronutrients, what sports nutrition actually is, and how to basically use those macronutrients to support your workouts and your training. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. I also have available individualized plans, uh, nutritional individualized plans. We go over everything 
based on your goals. Nothing is ever the same with anybody. Um, and I do consults as well. So if you have more specific questions or you want to get more in detail, you can hit me up on Paddle Monster website. And if and nobody has any other questions, oh, there are more questions. Do you have any advice for people on the keto diet? Um, well, <laughs> the keto diet is um, kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of the keto diet, only because carbohydrates are very important as a performing athlete. Um, in order to get in a ketogenic state, it takes a, a lot of discipline and a lot of time. And a lot of times people uh, are not necessarily in that state. So you actually aren't um, using that fuel the way the ketogenic diet is made, if that makes sense. So you're kind of like, you're kind of shorting yourself out a little bit by not being able to eat carbs or not wanting to eat carbs to support your workouts. Now I know there's different levels in the keto diet as far as like some people they they do supplement their workouts with carbs um, so if you are gonna do that I guess so then it would pull you out of the ketogenesis state so it's kind of like one of these eh, I don't know I don't I don't personally like to push it on people um, if people are doing it that's that's fine I like to find out why why you're doing it and if there might be a better way to achieve your goals that you are looking to achieve with that but um, I'm not sure, Maxwell, is there any specific question that you had for the advice for people on the keto diet? Or if you, if you do, just you can go ahead and send me the, the question via message um, as far as that goes. Any thoughts on how to do real food versus long? Okay, so any thoughts on the need for real food versus supplementing on the longer races with the carbohydrate mix and gel and a need for fats or protein during a race. Okay, yeah, so the as far as it goes with real food versus supplementing with a carbohydrate mix, um, this is very individual. And uh, I, like me personally, I like to eat real foods, but actually in the longer endurance races, I like to eat real foods. But in the shorter races, I use Tailwind. Um, it's the supplement powder that you put in your drink. So this is really just an individual thing, what you practice with. It, sometimes people, they like to eat a gel or a goo and they like to chew and that's fine. Um, some people, they just want to drink because anything in their stomach that they digest or they swallow makes them feel sick. So as far as the benefit goes, yeah, the liquids would probably get in there faster. Um, but you need to test out what works for you and neither one or the other is necessarily better than the other. Uh, it's just important that you get something in. So, um, and then a need for fats or proteins during the race. Yeah, there is a need for fats and proteins during the race, especially as you go longer. So anything after like an hour and a half is when we start to incorporate more fats in, into the mix and anything after about two hours is when you start to incorporate proteins in your mix of uh, nutrition so that way you're replenishing uh, for muscle protein synthesis as you go along especially with these ultra endurance events um, yes you do need the fats and the proteins mixed in there with the carbs all right any truth to having pickle juice or chocolate milk benefit right after a race well, do you mix the pickle juice and the chocolate milk? Because that's pretty gross. No. <laughs> um, so, pickle juice or chocolate milk? That's kind of like two different questions, I think. So, pickle juice, I'm assuming you're talking about to replace the minerals and vitamins, maybe for cramping. Chocolate milk, a lot of people drink after the race because they are trying to get in protein and fats. Um, and chocolate milk, it tastes good and it has uh, protein and fat in it. So yeah, chocolate milk is a great way to supplement protein intake um, post-race. Pickle juice, yeah, if you're having uh, like cramping or if you, if you feel like um, you might be dehydrated or something, I know people do use pickle juice. Um, and actually when I used to play beach volleyball, I used to drink pickle juice. but. 
Tastes, tastes good. <laughs> um, what else do we have here? Oh, okay. Uh, I have used the keto diet last four times. Okay, so Maxwell is. We're going back to the keto diet. Um, so yes, a lot of people do use the keto diet to lose weight. You are cutting back the carbs, um, which so. The keto diet, basically, we eat a lot of carbs. We just do. They taste great. And that's fine. But the thing is that we eat, like, too many carbs that we actually don't really need. So um, what happens is when we're on the keto diet, essentially, you know, you're restraining yourself from eating the, these carbohydrates um, because we just overeat them. And, yes, you're going to lose weight. You don't have all that sugar that you're not burning off. Um, so awesome job losing 40 pounds. That's so cool. Um, you did a race last season. The one thing you know, so how to fuel up pre-race for increased performance. Like I said, I'm not sure how strict you are on the keto diet. If if it's if you're super strict on the keto diet, message me. Um, we can go over some different tactics that you can fuel yourself with. Um, but if you're not, you know, then we would supplement you with maybe just 25 grams of carbs pre. I'm not really sure your protocol with your keto diet though because I know a lot of people uh, do handle it a little bit differently than others. So like I said, Maxwell, if you have any more specific questions based on your yourself, um, I'd be happy to go over that with you uh, so that way we can get down to the bottom of that. But good job sticking to it and losing 40 pounds. That's awesome. You can, when you are racing, I mean, you can totally perform on fats. So if your body is used to it and you've been doing this for a while, you're going to perform on fats. It's not that you're not going to perform on fats. Uh, so I'm sure you did fine in the race. I'm not sure if you felt sluggish or whatnot. Um, that tends to be an issue with people that are on the keto diet is they, they feel more sluggish because their, their fats are not supplying the brain with the glucose. Um, so I know that tends to be a little bit of an issue, uh, but it depends like how you felt, if you felt good. I'm not sure how your performance was, but if you felt good and you're losing all that weight, I'd say stick with it for sure. So, all right. So I don't see any more questions coming in, but I know people are still watching, but I'm going to log off. And if you guys review this, uh, video, and you have any questions because you just logged on, you can feel free to message me and I will help you out in any way I can. Like I said, go on paddlemonster.com, see what kind of nutrition we have to offer and I'd love to work with you guys. Um, I hope everybody stays safe out there and gets out and stays active and gets in fresh air here in Florida. Super pretty out in the backyard, but um, yep, stay safe uh, and practice social distancing. Hope to see you guys soon.